I'm Ruchi Chopra, founder of Any Surprise, Any Place. I'm a graduate from NIFT, so I was keen to do fashion, to be honest. So I studied it for four good years, and my plan was to eventually have a baby brand of my own. How did the whole concept of ASAP come about? Uh, I was working uh, with Gap, and it was like a nine to eight, sometimes ten job. And uh, you know, in this busy schedule, at one point, at one day, I want to surprise a friend of mine, plan something small for her, and I couldn't get out of work. So this whole, um, you know, I look, looked out for people who could do something like that for me so that, you know, they can plan a surprise for someone. And I found no one. So it pretty much sort of bugged me a little, you know, and I also saw it as a hole in the market that there is a gap that somebody needs to fulfill. So I, I just gave it a shot. I wasn't even sure if, you know, this was going to work, if entrepreneurship was my thing. It was never planned, to be honest. So even when you first started out, the whole idea of sort of plunging into entrepreneurship was unheard of and considered risky at large. So how do you think that mindset and that ideology around entrepreneurship has evolved? See the concept I was very sold on from, from the day I thought of it. It's a very emotional business in terms of, you know, be it proposals, be it planning a little honeymoon surprise for somebody or, you know, a Mother's Day gift. I mean, why not? Why not make someone feel special on, on a day? So I took it pretty much, you know, as a, as a challenge, say, okay, we'll try it. And, and I had no, I had no expectations out of how well I should be doing this. I had no expectations of how well this will kick off. Plus, I'm not also from a business background. Family is not into business. So I felt at 23, it was way easier to get up and do something. And I genuinely believe that this is a great thought and a great idea. That, de that definitely helped to make it happen, to make me, you know, like work late nights and not, you know, like for the first two years, I, I refused to travel anywhere without internet. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't go on the Himalayan hikes with my friends. I refused. I said, you know what, I need, I need to be there because what if somebody wants to plan a surprise? So I think that all came from the heart and I was very, very excited about the idea. And have you also been really excited about the whole digital storm that hit the Indian shows lately? Extremely. I really think that, you know, it's uh, for men, women, both, it's made life very easy. Uh, with the digital, you can also set your own timings. If you just walk across any street in the country, there's a bacon in every third house. And they are, they are, whether it's, you know, they're doing it through Facebook, they're doing it through Twitter, through WhatsApp, they are just, everyone's out there to do, do something. And, you know, I think that's a very, very good attitude. And we've been on, on, on the web since the beginning, mm -hmm. since the first year itself. I think it's all over now. So it's, it's, I think it's a great thing. Are you planning to diversify or maybe venture out into another enterprise sometime soon? New ventures, yes. I'm very excited about starting new things and I've had lots of ideas. But I'm currently working on a new idea in the fashion uh, you know, side. So you also recently went from being an entrepreneur to a mompreneur. Was that transition really massive and what did it mean for your professional life? Well, one thing is definitely changes. I think a lot for doing things for babies now. <laughs> so I, my ideas are often, uh, what can we do? What more can we do? Can we bring up a more exciting line for children? What does a one-year-old understand? So I'm constantly also looking at my baby and thinking that there's got to be different surprises that you can do for somebody who doesn't understand much. But I'm quite excited about um, working currently on a lot of interesting things that could be fun for, you know, for babies. See, you were to counsel young women aspirants and moms who are contemplating getting into entrepreneurship but are skeptical for obvious reasons. What advice would you give to them? Thanks to digital, it's simpler, it's way simpler. You don't have to go to a store, you don't have very, very big investments to make. It's very easy thanks to day and age we are in. You know, you could probably do a lot of things from your phone itself. If you can't go to a school to be able to deliver a lecture, you can do the same online, sitting at home while you're a mother. So I feel that it's a great time for, you know, being a mother when you can, you're, you're gonna be able to handle so much more while still maybe being at home with your baby. And finally, what are your top three mantras for leadership? Uh, see, when it comes to women, I think one of the strongest things about a woman is that they have a very good, they have a very strong gut. And your gut feels that this is, you know, making sense. I think you should totally go with it. It's not important to always start big. Start small, save on things that you can. For instance, you don't have to start with a fancy office. You, know, you don't need a glass office to start a business. Do all the savings you can in many ways and, and invest it over, you know, getting more sales to your business. 
My third uh, you know, mantra would be, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Core of the business is to sell. So I would say definitely take a lot of advice and finally of course do how you you know, really want to and do it uh, your way. But for basics, it's always great to consult everyone. That's what I would suggest.